welcome to the Daily Divine Feminine. I'm your host, Vivian V. And today's episode is Q&A Thursday. Every Thursday we do a segment where it's all about you guys and your questions that you submit via Instagram, both on the Daily Divine Feminine account and also my personal account at Vivian V. And I also am looking forward to being able to film these episodes for you guys if you're watching this video here on youtube or if you're listening to the podcast i want to be able to just reach more of you in ways that are helpful and work within your life whether you're listening to a podcast on your commute to and from work or as you're doing chores or if you're watching this youtube video i would love to know if you have a preference if you want me to do more video formats all of those things are really huge help to find out the best ways to help you guys so please let me know um but yeah today's episode is a q a thursday i am so grateful for all your questions and i have basically a submission box on our instagram accounts um, every Thursday morning for you to submit these questions and you can also remain anonymous if you choose to. So let's go ahead and just get right into the questions today. All right, so first question comes from Karame Torrijos and you asked a lot of good questions, so thank you for all of them. I wish I could answer all of them. And this one particularly has been something I've been thinking about a lot, so I had to answer it. It's like you knew. And the question is, you think the spaces in which we live influence the way in which we live and how we feel? And yes, I truly do. I think that you are a product of your environment and this can be the people you surround yourself with or quite literally the physical environment, the space in which you are surrounded by. And this is very evident in our day to day as we're going through different environments, but one environment particular is your home and that's something that you have more control over there is no really same feeling of that sense of being home it's ultimate security it's also a place of rest it's a place of healing it's a place of resets and overall foundation of possibly enhancing your life essentially and that's why i love home decor if you guys have been following me for a while i love to move i think that changes in environment and being able to adapt to these but also make them your own can really enhance your lifestyle in the way that you feel if you recognize where you thrive and also self-expression if you feel like it's a reflection of who you are and also in the way that you place things and the way that the layout is, it could also affect if it supports your habits. So yes, I do really think it influences it. Um, I'll, for example, I really like having a clean, organized space. Personally, I feel with clutter, I am distracted. I. I think that personally I like having things be organized because I don't feel overwhelmed. I am like a more sensitive person to my surroundings which is a blessing because I think that it allows me to be more creative in spaces and also absorb beauty in my surroundings a lot and that's why I love home decor because I I try my best to, to really think about it as like a canvas and find pieces that make me feel comforted, that make me feel a certain way. And yeah, another example would be for if you're trying to form habits. I think that the spaces in which we live can definitely influence our habits. And for example, if you want to start reading more, where are your books? Do you have a bookshelf that's accessible to you or are your books in the back of a closet? Are your books something that you actually see every day? So there's a cognitive association that it is within something that's convenient to you. Because as humans, we definitely have a way of doing things over and over if it's convenient to us, which is why if you have your phone by your nightstand or on your nightstand charging every night, you're more often likely to wake up and go straight on your phone versus charging your phone maybe in a different room 
there is that decision you have to make like do I want to get up to be my phone or do I want to get up and maybe read the book that's on the bookshelf right next to my bed or on the nightstand so that's just an example I mean if you think about the things around you what do you grab every day what does that support is it supporting the habits that you want and the lifestyle that you want and if it isn't maybe replace it so if you don't want to be on your phone when you first wake up don't put it where you're going to be reaching if you want to start reading more make books something that are going to be within your everyday routines if you want to start journaling put your journal next to your coffee maker in the morning so that way when you make that coffee and it's dripping you have that journal to open up to and you're already doing it because you're already wired to make that coffee to create that coffee but why don't you connect that to that new habit that new lifestyle change that you want to start journaling more i think that if you want to start cooking more make sure that you make it appealing to you make it convenient to you so when you recognize that you are a product of your environment you can find ways to make that work for you and be excited about it and this will become habits that are instilled it's called habit stacking if you read the book atomic habits by james clear i highly highly recommend it it's kind of where i got this idea that you don't make it harder than you need to to thrive in the environment that you live in if anything make it a place that you feel your most self and encourages the changes that you want to make in your life or encourage the hobbies that you want to start doing more or just make it a place where you feel proud of because it's yours so yes ultimately yes and kind of a whole spiel i would love to talk more about that because i love home decor for this reason i think that if i can help in any way curate spaces for myself or the people that i love or for you guys to be able to thrive with these kind of elements in mind that's something i would love to do in the future so i am so happy you asked that question because i'm so passionate about it so all right, next question is from Faneev, and she asks, do you have a bachelor degree? I actually don't. So I have an associate's degree. When I was in high school, I had this goal of wanting to be able to go to college and get a bachelor's degree. And I don't come from a particularly financial abundant home. It was something that I knew I'd, I'd probably have to get financial aid on, probably would have to work a lot of jobs. I took advantage of a program called Running Start, which was basically going to the community college while I was in high school to get both my high school credits and also college credits done. So I essentially took classes off campus from my junior year uh, through my senior year. I was off campus at the community college and just taking as many college classes as I could because they were financially supported by this program so I didn't have to pay as much out of pocket. And that was like my goal, but I actually ended up starting to YouTube at the time, which I was so excited about. It gave me a chance to connect to people because I wasn't getting that as much at the community college as trying to get my credits done. And I wasn't at the high school um, pretty much like half the time of like my four years. So I didn't end up getting my bachelor's degree because I had to make the decision of whether I wanted to pursue YouTube full time when I was a freshman in college. So I got into my major as a college freshman, but I took one quarter and immediately was like, I can't balance both and I, I have such a longing to pursue YouTube full-time. It allowed me to travel, it allowed me financial independence that I never anticipated that early on in life, which I saw myself having after college. So it was kind of like timing, that time in my life to decide that that was better for me than pursuing a more traditional route. And I think that a lot of people are realizing that now you don't necessarily need the same education kind of mapping concept like you have to get da, 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 to get anywhere in life i think that it's a good foundation for a lot of careers but not necessarily 
for everyone and especially if you want to pursue something that might take you on a more apprenticeship route or it might take you down a networking kind of who you know build your way up through the people that you know but a lot of times you can find that through the education system as well but yeah I didn't get my bachelor's degree and I think that everyone has kind of their own route to go about whether they decide to go to college or not, what they want to do with their education, and navigating the post-college of a lot of times not getting into the job that your major, you know, was planned to and all of that. I think we're realizing now, if you're watching this in your 20s, you could probably agree. Things didn't go necessarily as planned, but they ended up working out. And I think that's like a common theme that I kind of have to remind myself in times where what I'm doing may not align to what I have envisioned a year ago, that rejection and things not working out usually is a redirection towards what is better for me. So if that resonates with you at all, I think that's like a message I want to kind of make clear because a lot of times our childhood were kind of kind, kind of this whole idea of you don't go to college and you're not successful. I don't think that's true. I think it helps. I think education is something that can be not only for a career, but also just for your own knowledge of discovering what you're passionate about and learning just life skills and connections in order to pursue whatever it is that your life ends up entailing. But that's a long way to answer no. I didn't get my bachelor's degree, but that's kind of why. And I just wanna make sure like my message um, conveys something that might resonate with you along the same lines, even if it wasn't the same exact situation that things sometimes just don't work out the way we plan and it ends up working out to be better. And you don't realize until it's already past that point, but when you're in the process, it's a lot of uncertainty and sometimes it's about trusting that things will work out for the better in the end. All right, last question is from Ahmed Tas Nim. And the question is, do you prefer digital as to keep tracks of your goals or a physical planner? So. As far as goal setting, I kind of have a few different tools I use. So actually right in front of me here, I have these. This is my full focus planner. And if you're listening to the podcast, um, basically it's just this really well laid out planner. I like to do a five minute journal every morning, which is a physical pen to paper thing. That is my preferred way of, I guess, keeping track of my progress. And I like the concept of sitting down and writing. I think it's a grounding feeling to not be on my phone because I think a lot of things now are on my phone. So to be on a different medium kind of sets a different tone to the pace at which I'm going, but also um, the ability to to just put thoughts into a physical paper thing I can flip through and look back on is really, for me, nice because then I can like flip back and look at a couple weeks ago or a month ago and recognize the common themes that I have been getting better at or reminding myself of like the progress I've made. And as far as goal setting goes, though, if I'm on my phone and a thought comes up, then I'll go to my notes if I don't have my planner to just have it down because there are some ideas you have in your head and you think about it and you're so passionate about it and then it could be just like a couple minutes later and it's gone. And I really have a lot of love for reflection and like I have just so many random pieces of paper everywhere in my apartment that are just thoughts that just come to me that I will refer to and be like oh my gosh like that's a great idea I'm so glad I wrote it down and sometimes if my phone is better accessible I'll do that but preferably I do like writing it down Um, my calendar is on my phone for like birthday reminders for events for flights but goal setting journaling reflection I tried my best to have that on paper and like this is my thoughts journal it's a journal i've had for a couple years now as i'm reading i'll just jot down like 
kind of summarizations of things that hit me or quotes that hit me and it's not necessarily always journaling about how I feel a lot of my journaling is actually about things I learn because we as humans forget so easily we remember things sometimes that don't serve us as much as the things that we tend to forget so if I think that something will really serve me future me that I can apply I want to write it down because I want to remember and I tend to remember the things that I write down more than what I put in my phone because we write a lot on our phones we don't write as much physically on paper so what I write down I want to remember and I tend to remember more because I do that so that's kind of my reasoning for that all right guys so that is it for today's Q&A Thursday I hope that you guys found something to be helpful I'm so grateful for all your questions as always every Thursday we'll continue to do these if your question wasn't answered please come back I would love to hopefully answer it in the next episode With that being said, I'll go ahead and leave you with some positive affirmations. Everything is working out in my favor. My attitude has the power to alter circumstances.